All right, here we go. <clears throat> it's been a little minute since I've been live on Facebook, but I'm back at it. Another edition of Gen Sports Corner. You know what time it is. Thursday night, big night in Philadelphia tonight. Uh, Eagles are playing down in Houston against the Texans Thursday night football. And then the Phillies are playing in game five tonight back in Philly against the Houston Astros. So it's a Philly versus Houston type of night. And after last night's game, everybody thought we'd be coming into game four, rolling, Nola on the mound, be able to get another win here, go up 3-1, but that was not the case. Aaron Nola, not only did he get uh, defeated in that game, but he gave up three to four earned runs. Was not a good look in that fourth or fifth inning. Can't remember which one, but he had a similar outing to what Verlander had. He was on fire early, and then he just gave up uh, hit after hit after hit. He had uh, the corners at one point, and it might he might have had the bases loaded by the time he went out of the game. But the Astros were able to bounce back and respond. They had a really big game, and I made a video yesterday talking about Christian Javier, how good he was, what he'd be bringing. And he did exactly what I thought he'd do. Throws that high fastball, three inches above the top of the zone. Then he hits you with that nasty slider. And he has a similar release point. So it's very hard to pick up on where the ball is going to go. You have to make your choice. It's going to be one or the other. Because if you choose wrong, it's going to be hard to adjust. You have the fastball coming straight with a little bit of break. And then you have the slider. Same release, but breaking to the left. It's very, very hard to key in on that. That one at bat, I think, where I don't know if JT struck out swinging or looking, but he looked at the pitch and he said, no chance. It's it's tough. So I predicted that the Astros would win yesterday. I did not predict that they would have a combined no-hitter in that game. That's a hell of a response to the beatdown that he got in game three. So, look, both of these teams are here. They're not going anywhere. They're very – they're here for a reason. So I want to go through – some of the things that are uh, going to be pivotal for Game 5. And the matchup we have now is Verlander on the mound once again versus new pitcher in the lineup, Noah Syndergaard, starting tonight. So you look back at Game 1 and you look at Verlander's history in the World Series. It hasn't been good. So you look at his whole history, he's O.N. Shoot. Eesh. He is O.N. and 6 in his World Series starts with two no decisions on top of that. So game one of 2006, five innings, six earned runs, got shit on in a 7-2 loss, even though he had eight strikeouts. So I'm thinking that at some point, similar to game one, the, the wheels just fell off. Maybe he was having success early, and then maybe in the fourth or fifth, they just started laying it on him. Game five of 2006, six innings pitched, one earned run. They lost 4-2. That's not really his fault. Game one of uh, 2012, four innings pitch, five earned runs, really bad, 8-3 loss. 2017, five years later, six innings pitch, three earned runs, a no decision, and a 7-6 win. That's solid. You only give it three runs, that's solid. 2017, game six of the World Series, six innings pitch, two earned runs, nine strikeouts. Great game, but he lost 3-1. to one. Not really his fault. 2019. They're back in the World Series again. Game two, six innings pitched, seven hits, four earned runs, six strikeouts. They lost 12-3. He needs to pitch better. 2019, game six of that World Series, five innings pitched, five hits, three earned runs, and a 7-2 loss. I mean, you want your, your ace to pitch better than that. It's not a horrible game, but you, you expect more out of your ace. And then 2022, game one of the World Series between – the Phillies and the Astros, five innings pitched. He was cruising through the first four, I would get, I would say, with five strikeouts. But he gave up five runs in that game. We shellacked him. And if you go back to the game, that's the inning where you got two people on base and then you had that mega home run, that, that three-run shot. I mean, that just they got us back into the game. And he just never recovered from that. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't a three-run shot. Excuse me. Um, I'm thinking of the Ray Muto shot uh, later in, in the game. And there there was another game where we had um, Bryce Harper come up and hit a home run, then Alec Bohm. Okay, that was the that was the McCullers game, excuse me. 
So in the first game, fourth inning, Castellanos singles to left. Hoskins and Harper got on, and Hoskins came in for to score a run. I remember Harper. Okay, Harper had hit the single to right field. Hoskins was coming around third, and the third base coach put up the stop sign for whatever reason. We got lucky, and Castellanos bailed us out on the very next at bat. And then after that run comes in, boom, doubles to left, boom, smokes one to left field to the get uh, to the corner, smokes it damn near down the line, and then Castellanos and Harper come in. And it's 5-3. And then the very next inning, Schwarber gets on and Marsh gets on. And then Real Muto, he doubles to deep left center field, one of the deepest parts of that ballpark, and ties the game up. And then later in the game, you know, he homers. But he got he got five runs scored off of him in the span of two innings. He just fell apart. So he's had, had, he's had his ups and his downs. Some games have not been his fault, but he's had other games where he's just had the wheels fall off. And for a guy supposed to be an ace with the type of stuff he has is really inexplicable. Because you look at the NLCS or the NLDS on fire. But then you go to the World Series and it's just like Jekyll and Hyde. It's a mixed bag of results. So going into this game, you have to know that that's going to be on everybody's mind. But it's definitely on Verlander's mind. There's no way it's not going to be on your mind. It's, it's happened over the course of eight games, this is your ninth game in the World Series. How could you not be thinking about what if? Even if everything's going right for three, four, five innings, you're always sitting on edge like, what if they, they figured me out? What if they figured me out and I don't I don't know it yet? And then they start hitting off me. It's going to be in your mind somewhere, in the deep recesses, back here, up top, in the front, somewhere. You're going to be thinking about those things. And then you're going against Noah Syndergaard. And Noah Syndergaard, he's been around for a long time. And this lineup has seen him a lot for Houston. Altuve, 527 at-bats against him. Pena, even Jeremy Pena has 521 at-bats against Syndergaard. Jordan Alvarez, 470. All these guys have seen him except for Hensley, who's only seen him 29 times. But the whole lineup has seen Syndergaard. And they've had fairly good success against him. So you have to look at... This game right here, oh excuse, excuse excuse me, my bad. That was for um for Verlander. So let's see season. Uh, these, these yeah these stats for on ESPN are messed up. So um yeah those stats were for Syndergaard and then. For the Phillies, they've obviously seen him a similar amount of time. So there's there's going to be no surprises like there were last game where none of these guys in the lineup except for Marsh and Schwarber saw Javier. So I was not really surprised. And that's why I made the prediction that I did. You have one of the best pitchers in baseball. And then on top of that, nobody in your line has ever seen him versus Nola, who they have a good scouting report against. So... I was not surprised. I did not see it going the way it did, just like I didn't see us blowing them out the water in game three. But I thought that the Astros had the clear edge. Now, going into this this game, Syndergaard, he's not the Thor of old. He's not who we've become accustomed to seeing. However, he can give you three to four good innings, I believe. So I think you get through this Astros lineup one time by... If you can get through, through the the second inning and get through the lot at one time, I think by the third inning, you, you're going to be thinking about, okay, you're going to, you're going to have the bullpen starting to warm up. Hopefully you can get through the third inning and get through the entire lineup. And then it would be idea that you would come into the fourth and you'd be able to bring in a guy like Eflin or a guy that can eat up some innings. If Syndergaard gets in trouble the second time around. So that's, that's what I would think that Rob Thompson has on his mind let me know what you guys opinion is on that but i don't think he wants to let Syndergaard go too long into this game i think he wants to get to the bullpen try to get a lead on verlander and then get to the bullpen and protect Syndergaard. that being said i don't foresee verlander struggling again like he did in game one and i actually think that he's going to have an opposite outcome from what he's experienced in his World Series 
uh, journey so far over the years. I think he's going to pitch fairly decent to good. And it's going to come down to can they protect Syndergaard. That's what I think this game comes down to. All right, because we've seen Verlander over the years. Everybody knows who he is in that lineup. We've just seen him in the World Series. They know exactly what to expect out of Verlander. Verlander's going to give you five innings pitching at 97 miles an hour. He knows he can let it loose because they're not going to keep him in more than that. So you're going to have to get to him early. And I think they can. They're just going to have to protect Syndergaard. Syndergaard is going to have to pitch solidly. Nothing great. Pitch solid, man. Get us three to four innings so we can get to that bullpen. And boom, then we can see where it goes from there. But beyond that, this is it's a mismatch between Verlander and then Syndergaard. It's, a, it's an obvious mismatch. So on all, uh, my nod would go to the Astros in game five. I know that's not what people want to hear, but that's my honest assessment of this matchup. I think that the Astros are going to win this game with their pitching. Maybe they hit hit Syndergaard in the bullpen, maybe they don't, but I think that they'll have they'll just be just just a half just a step ahead of us of, of us in this game. All right? So, if I'm a, if I'm Rob Thompson, what I'm really looking at is can we steal a win with no you know Syndergaard and then I feel confident even though we're going back to Houston one way or another for game 6. I feel confident in having Zach Wheeler back on the mound for, for game six. Because just like I don't see Verlander getting shellacked two times in a row, I also don't see Zach Wheeler getting shellacked two times in a row. And then in game seven, I will be looking to go right back to Ranger Schwartz because he showed you exactly who he was in that game three. And that gives me confidence going into game seven if we get there with Ranger Schwartz. And a big reason for that is because they, they've they seen him, but they haven't, uh, they have not figured him out from what I can see from that game three. Because they, they, they effed him up in the second to last game of the season when we saw them. But it was a totally different ball game in game three. So that's what I would be looking at. I think the Astros will win game five, but I feel confident in going with Zach Wheeler and Ranger Suarez in game six and game seven. But this game I see as a mismatch with Syndergaard versus Verlander. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as you know, the Eagles are playing tonight as well uh, down in Houston. And look, they just have to make sure they don't get caught up in a trap game. Houston is a team that's rebuilding. They don't really have a lot on offense. Brandon Cooks is not playing tonight. They have a quarterback who's very young, who's he is what he is right now. Defensively, their secondary is actually above average. They are very underrated. They have was it Derek Stingley Jr. at, at cornerback, the rookie. That they have a pretty pretty solid secondary. However, they do not stop the run well. They faced the Titans last week, and you know Derek Henry is going to be running forward play after play after play they knew the run was coming and they still couldn't stop it so th for the eagles to not get caught up in the trap game all they really have to do is focus on that ground game give the balls to miles sanders run that uh rpo with jalen hurts keep applying pressure to that defense and they're going to fold like a house of cards and then once you have them coming up into the box and you get the single one-on-one -on, -one on the outside then hey i, I say go ahead and test Derek stingley on the outside um, with AJ Brown, Devontae Smith don't matter. He's gonna he's gonna play pretty good, but I like my odds of of winning with those two guys on the outside. We just saw it last week with AJ Brown. Obviously, Stingley is better than the Steelers cornerbacks, but this is AJ Brown. This is swole Batman. Don't forget that. So my prediction, you know. Surprisingly, shockingly, it's the Philadelphia Eagles over the Houston Texans tonight. They're going to cover the spread. Oh, snap. I, I need to actually make my predictions. I'm glad I reminded myself here. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Eagles over the Texans. I'm taking them to cover the spread. And I, I think they progress to 8-0 tonight. Hopefully they um, go down there and don't get caught up in the hype train that they've created so far. And they just steamroll over this team. So let me know if you disagree, agree, 
don't like my prediction, could care less, whatever. Leave it in the comments below. And I'll be back at you guys either tomorrow or Saturday. Or I'll give a prediction for um, the, the Phillies game six. Oh, also, you know what? I'll be back. Uh, maybe maybe tomorrow. We'll see. I need to cover the big fight this weekend between Dimitri Bivol and Zerto. It's a dangerous fight for Bivol. Zerto Ramirez, I believe, moving up to 175 to face Dimitri Bivol for his belt. So we're, we're going to find out very quickly. Uh, no, I think Dimitri Bivol has two belts now, right? Because uh, I think the one that Canelo had from Sergey Kovalev. Maybe he lost at the B-Ball. Either way, it's going to be a huge fight. I I'm very intrigued by this. So let me know what you guys think about that, and we'll be talking about that fight as well. All right, so enjoy the, the game tonight, and hopefully Phils can prove my prediction wrong, and we come out 3-2. Either way, we're going to have fun tonight. All right, catch y'all later. Peace.